What's up everyone, it is Mikey Lowe here, and welcome to Doki Doki Simulator. Doki 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 Simulator? Oh my god. Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Now, when we last left off, we were about to share our first poems, and uh, we're gonna pick who to show it to first. Let's go with Sayori. I'm definitely most comfortable sharing with Sayori first. She's my good friend after all. That's that, that. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Mikey. Huh? I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. Honestly, you have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even at Suki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people you know. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem, it's a Mikey poem! <laughs> I don't think that has much, uh, much, uh, much gravitas there. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs her sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> I'm just really happy you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing right in front of you in the club room. You're stupid. Or, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Mikey. Deep down, you're not so selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something that really only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Boobies. And again, can't deny she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That, that will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold that to you then. Better make me feel better. Yay! Now you read my poem too, right? Don't worry, it's a really bad. I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine. The way you glow through my blinds in the morning. It makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed. Making me rub my sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you testing me to wish away a rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue. It is secret. But I love to you too. If it isn't for you, I would sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Sayori, this is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No, j j just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least it makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. Still try my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say it like it was a bad poem. It just came out. It came out nice, or passionate to put it. It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially the last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. <laughs> See, this is why I, lo I love Zayori. She's just so, she's she's like, she's literally me, and also like part I can see parts of my girlfriend in that too. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this is way this is so much fun. Micah's the best. Ah, yeah. 
but next time I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Alright, we'll go with... Thuki. Uh, well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Uh, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't invoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your taste. Sick burn! Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. Well, anyway, I need to show you my. I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Yeah. I told you we weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Be, just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks I'm ri writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly! I like it when it's easy to read but hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. Glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided... Go away. I decided to humor her the last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Nasuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, we'll go Yuri. Hmm. Hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute, pa a minute passes. More than enough time for her to finish reading. Um... Oh, s sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Uh, um, it's fine. Don't don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing. First time writing a poem, right? Er, uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. It's ah, so it's that bad. No. Did I just raise my voice? Oh, uh, sorry. Yuri um, buries her face in her hands. Couldn't help but notice um, that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. Might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I really didn't notice. What, what were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there were specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I've recognized in new writers is that they try to make it their own style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter and they form and they form fit it together. The end result um, is that both the style and expressiveness are weakened. Once she refines her train of thought, it's if her it's if her it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something I could you can be blamed for. There are so many different still skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. 
I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you a valuable feedback. That still can be a bit biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. That's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thoughts process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if it's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? I know, right? It's almost as if she was programmed that way. Ghost Under the Light The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining streetlight, to have the stored the test of time, the last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm breathing, air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers, I flicker back. I'm sorry, I must have had such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking of that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That... That's... a belief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too sh It wasn't too short? I wish you'd write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I hope. Are you into ghost theory? <laughs> Actually, the poem wasn't about ghosts at all, Mikey. Really? Oh, shit. Alright, well, well, I suppose you didn't glance over it all over after all but remember that poets often express their own thoughts feelings and experiences in the work they usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture in this case perhaps the subject of the poem is only be being symbolically compared to a ghost lingering in her last remaining place of comfort unable to let go of the past and soon to be left with nothing that's a lot more solemn than putting it that way I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before we pick up on these two. Yeah, maybe you're right. Guess we'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on, I'm counting on you. Alright, the only one left is Monica. Let's do it. Hiya, Mikey! Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good! Glad to hear it! By the way, since you're new at everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening! Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Thrust? Don't worry, Mikey. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's kind of a sh... But, but it's that sort of barrier that we'll le all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I have Monica my poem. Hmm, I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Ah, uh, well... We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm... Well, that might be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities you didn't expect. The way she talks about you. Sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. 
even if you don't show it in even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being the more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading too much? Ha ha ha! I could be Thrust. Oh my gosh, is that like Yuri? But in any case, Sayuri's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. I'm sure I'll- I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. I could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style of writing that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you don't. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Ha ha ha! This totally isn't a dating sim or anything where you have to impress other girls. Ha ha ha! The inconspicuous thrust. <laughs> Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel like the way, you know? I see. Well, well, let's read it then. Hole in a wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes, a noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I wheel, blind, like a fun left arm on the sun. But it's too late. My redness. Already scorched with the permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. So what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Ha ha ha, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style's getting pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between the words and the lines. When performed aloud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure how to put it. I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been kind of influencing my poems a little bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about the deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway... Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on, the, on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy up later. Another way to think about it is, if you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you just get a big, dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they were just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is Literature Club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I end up getting into myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Atsuki. 
They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. They read in tandem, I watch each other's expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Did you say something? Oh, it's- oh, it's nothing. Yuri dismissively returns to the, the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss a symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How could that be cute? Uh, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice? Thanks, but I didn't really come out for nice at all. Um, well, I have a couple suggestions. Humph! If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. See, I really liked it, and Mikey did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. No! Mm. And Mikey liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Mitsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I- Ugh. Y you're- you're just- Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Mikey appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go on my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ooh. Um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose booze magically grew a bigger size as soon as Mikey started showing up. Oh, oh shit. He's just getting into some melons instead of apples. And you got some oranges, but you know what? Actually, some like cuties, but like, anyway, whatever. And Natsuki. Um, um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls uh, turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Mikey, she, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get her get over herself and learn to appreciate the simple writing is more effective, it this would have happened in the first place. That's the point of making your poems all con convoluted for no reason. The meaning should jump out of the reader, not force them to have to try and figure it out. Help me explain it to her, Mikey. But wait. There's a reason there's there's so many deep expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meanings the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessary limiting yourself, but also a waste. You understand that, right, Mikey? Um... Well... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whoever might agree with, they'll probably think, I'm hi think more highly of me. So, of course, that's gonna be... Help, Miss Sayori! Natsuki! Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. Yuri! But Yuri's expression is so defensive, it's defenseless, that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! Eh? Yeah. Everyone's fighting, it's making Sakuri uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? God. Damn, I am smooth. Mikey. Well, that's her problem. That isn't about her. Uh, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri how messed up a jerk she's being. She would never. It's your immaturity that's making her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why, exactly why nobody likes to stop! Natsuki, 
Yuri! You guys are my friends! I... I just want everyone to get along and be happy! My friends are young, wonderful people! And I love them because of their differences! And Suki's poems? They're amazing because it gives you so many feelings with just a few words. And yours poems are, poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Be because, well, also, Nisuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's poofs are as big as they've always were. <laughs> <laughs> big, big and beautiful. <coughs> Sayori Sayori stands triumphantly Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression I'll make some tea Yuri rushes off Mitsuki sits down and with a blank expression on her face staring at nothing So this is why Sayori is vice president I whispered to Monica She nods in return to be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not a very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing for me. Ha <laughs> ha Nah, it's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing on her own ways, isn't she? You can say that. She might be an airhead, so, but sometimes it's really suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Thrust. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to not. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get a chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone. Just about time for us to leave. How'd you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I say it was worth it. It was alright, well, mostly. Mikey? Mikey, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, I'll do, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Maybe you'll learn something from your friends too, so your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, did I learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes? With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with a newfound de determination. Mikey! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Siri beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sierra and I have spent this much time together. Can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Itsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, 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 no! This is really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. Just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Mikey, it's nice I get, to ch I get to it's nice that I get to spend time with you at the club. But I think seeing seeing you will get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's he 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 he. Everyone day, every day is gonna be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but. Does we need to stop there? Or can we be friends with benefits? Well, just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an international monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, make it bomb. So, it actually worked out pretty well uh, last time for... Regardless of how many times uh, we accidentally went for, you know, Natsuki and Yuri. But let's see if we can get this a little bit easier this time. Oh, Sayori, you're so amazing with the way you handle everything. Everything in the world is just so peaceful when you're... Fuck. 
You dazzle everything when you walk into a room. You cheer everyone up every single day with uh, with your excitement and uh, and uh, and your in the way you twirl the uh, v v v v fireflies. Uh, every time I see you, I get fireflies in my stomach. Yeah, I know people don't want to say butterflies, but fireflies with me because because uh, because you romance my world with your uh, with with your with your with the way you make everything seem like it's full of flowers and and chocolates and sugar. Ah. And uh, you, when I'm around you, it feels like I'm flying. And uh, I can't help but laugh when you twirl and make jokes and such. You really are a special girl. It's, I remember when we used to play on the... And everything was peaceful back then. Hopefully, together, we can bring back some of that, uh, some of that pure... And daydream as, uh, as we spend our... Fuck! And play every day. Another day passes, and it's time for the club to, um, club meeting again already. I've gotten a little more comfortable over here in the past couple days. Entering the club room as usual, the scene greets me. Hi, Mikey. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to seeing you in the club. That's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always simple things with you anyway. Speak Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? Th th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look in your purse, Sayori? Are you gonna find some, 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 some tampons, some condoms, and you need some, some adrenaline? Why, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh... Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Uh... I knew it. I can see it right through you, Sayori. It's not fair. How would you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have, have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you were not hungry and wanted to excuse it to take a walk, or you planned to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. Why? I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuria suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face in her her face is in her book as always. Uh, uh, I wasn't listening in or anything. Sure you weren't, Sayori. Sure you weren't. I was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Mikey to let me borrow some money. That's to get me involved in that, Sayori. Besides. You should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough for attribution. Uh, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I, I, I got too absorbed in my, into my book. Ooh. <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's, it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You are right, though. I did something bad, now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still coming from- still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? Hehe. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys how she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But- but- You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that. <laughs> Did I just slap Sayori? 
That was a little fucking put my put my rings on, just <laughs> pimp slap her right there. All right, whatever. Yeah. Out of nowhere, is something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles on the desk. Ow! What was? Eh? A cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is is this a miracle? It's because I pay my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about cupcake about the cupcakes. You sold your war singing reaction though. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. <laughs> Sayori suddenly claps her hands on her over her mouth. Burn my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. Hehe. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand and Suki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Oh. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you just seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes! Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Nisuki glances around. Monica isn't in the classroom. Ugh! Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard about anything about her leaving late today? Not me. Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Um, that's a bit unusual. Hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh! You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Heh <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I I'm super sorry. There you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club of a boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzily glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something, so, something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I will let you down, Mikey. Thrust. Ah. I don't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. I've been really... I'd really love the chance to share with um, once I'm ready. Let's see. <coughs> In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back into her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Mikey, Mikey! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. 
I'm gonna go get some supplies from the other classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? For what? Well, you know, the festival is coming up. Me and Monica are, are, are we're gonna make uh, some posters and stuff. So I need to find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica will be back soon. Huh, are you going going are you going with Mikey to get the supplies? There's no need for trouble there's no need to your trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with them. Aw, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay. Ready, Mike? Ready, Mikey? Yep, let's go. <coughs> Siori and I exit the club room. I follow behind Siori, hums, and skips around the hallways. Honestly, feels like I'm Taiki taking a kid out to the mall or something. Siori finds pleasure in the simple things sometimes. Hey, Siori, what exactly are we doing at the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. Performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna turn take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds kind of dull. Mikey, you're not thinking about, about the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like you say the lines of the poems like between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from the clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, I took it in every direction. The once per prosperous field before me, by a barren wasteland! Like that! Sayori, how do I put this? Sure, it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh, you meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty uh, un unordinary to contrast to your cute self. <laughs> don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that just means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I'm so excited! The festival's going to be so much fun! Siori spins herself around the hallway again. Hey, Mikey, the, cl the classroom over, he over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent this... It's been a long time since I've spent time with Siori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. It's not like a, a ball of sunshine ha drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to, and to hold myself up in her classroom more and more. So going and venturing with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight for the closet, closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sayori pulls a box of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Sayori pulls the very... So I was pulling the various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we'll still need to find- Wait! I'm thinking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Oh, it dropped by accident. Smack! Ka! Except where he bends over and, s and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill over her lap. Ow, 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 ow! You okay? My forehead! Sayori clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. It's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of, out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. <sighs> Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs off to the side. Ow! Sorry. There's a huge red mark in the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. 
Should find you some ice. Mikey. What would I even find ice around this time? Ah, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, Sayori still makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? Be right back, okay? Oh, okay. I pat Siri on the shoulder and run out the ho into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? Doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Siri likes apple juice, so I, pour so I purchase that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they're already in the young spots before I started them. Sayori, here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens up the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, uh, sorry, I forgot. Haha. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottle against the bump on her head. Still stings. Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Mikey. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Yeah? What do you mean? You know, how we used to play outside all the time. I'd always try to keep up with you. You're kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fall behind or had trouble climbing things the way you did. But sometimes, when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would hurt myself. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump, and I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would really... You really, uh... You would really... You would really... You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself when you were afraid of it, of getting in trouble or something found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. Guess I could always... Guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't really pay enough attention to you. So, in that way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you to get out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Mikey. I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that. Yeah, I don't really do this kind of stuff all the time. I guess when it comes to you, I just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. Guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Mikey? I'm so glad nothing's changed between us. Do you still do you think we'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, it's no telling what each of us will end up at for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But well I hope so. It's been a long time already, right? I can't imagine you're changing my mo so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Siori um, has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. Guess we should go back. Don't want to, don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see her forehead either way. But if I hide it with my under my bangs, she already hops to her feet. Ow! She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up and fast if you're hurting yourself. Ooh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump without much success. In a moment, we'll be back in the classroom club room. Ah, you're back! Good timing! I was just about ready to start with sharing our poems! Eh? Sayori, your forehead! She's fine, don't worry about. I was playing with crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Anyway, <laughs> she just, better just to just ignore it. Were we able to find everything we needed? Uh huh. I have it right. Eh? So we're French and glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff. Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper too. Ah! Uh -huh. Trust. 
Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Mikey. Uh, well, Sayori. I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. Haha, <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the post paper tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should- Guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box was closed tightly, I returned to my seat. Okay. We're gonna end this episode here. I think it's a little bit longer than the first one. But, uh, yeah. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. We're reviewing this tonight. Have a good night. Stay awesome, guys.